What's up guys? Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to check out the newest version of Fluent, version 2.0. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Fluent is a hard surface modeling tool that you can get from the Blender market. And we've talked about it on the channel before, but in today's video, we're going to check out the newest version. Um, remember, there are two versions of Fluent. There's the regular Fluent, and then there's the Fluent Power Trip, which, which also comes with the plate, wire, pipe, grid, and cloth panel tools. So if you're going to go with one of these, it really probably makes sense to go with the $29 one instead of the $20 one, just because it comes with a bunch more tools. Um, but basically what this tool does is it gives you a ton of different tools for doing hard surface modeling, right? So it's got tools for like creating different cuts on objects. It's got tools for mirroring them. Um, for adding wires and pipes and other things like that. So lots of things going on with this one. I figured we could just jump in and kind of look at what the new version looks like. So the new version has basically been rewritten um, so that it has a completely new interface so that it's uh, more user friendly. So basically the way that it works is when you install and enable Fluent, you can tap the F key and you can open up this little window right here. This window looks pretty much like it did before. Um, the changes start when you actually like apply a tool. So let's start by adding a cut to this object. And remember, what you do is you pick a shape or you pick a location, right? So let's say for example that I wanted to pick a location right here, I would just click, then click again, then notice how I can use this in order to add a cut to my object like this. So then notice how now if I click and hold my mouse button down, so I can scroll around while I'm doing this, but if I click and hold my left mouse button down, I get options for the other things that I can do with this cut. So for example, um, right now we're setting the offset. If I hold the C, then we're gonna set the thickness, right? So by clicking and holding and then selecting these objects, I'm gonna get different results. And so once I'm done, I can click and hold. So notice how when I selected that, that's gonna give me additional options. So it's gonna give me additional options like adding a second bevel to the object, or this allows me to set this so that it's gonna curve a little bit more. But then I can also, when I validate this, I can click and hold and select more options. So for example, if I select the mirror option and then click on this, what it's gonna do is it's going to mirror my object along the center right here. So notice how I can use that in order to quickly add different mirrors and different things like that to this object. Notice how there are other tools in here as well. So things like I can adjust the rotation. So if I decide that I want this to like rotate like this, I can click on an option and then move my mouse in order to rotate this. So I could also click on the dimension tool in order to adjust this. So all of my adjustments in here are live and it's a lot easier to access these different things now. And then once I'm set, I can just click on the validate button right here. And then when we're done, we can click and hold to do a validate and quit. So that's gonna take me out of the tool so then I can use the tool in order to uh, keep making changes. So if I hold the F key again, and let's say we wanted to add a bevel, we could just click and add a bevel right here. Notice how that's gonna quickly add a bevel to my object. And so let's say we wanted to add an, an inset to this object, we would just do the same thing where we could click and move our mouse like this. Notice how that's gonna allow me to add a quick inset in here. And notice how that bevel that was in here was live. So what that means is that means that this object is also going to be beveled in here. So you can use this in order to quickly add all of those different cuts and other things like that. Remember that since this is a non-destructive tool, what you can do is you can tap the F key with it selected. You can actually see the Boolean objects in here. Then you can also tap the F key and you can actually edit those objects just by clicking on this button right here when you have them selected. So what that means is that means I can click and hold in here and I can go back and I can actually adjust these, right? So if I wanted to change that rotation, I could put that back to what it was before like this. And I could quickly reset these and adjust these. So it's just super easy to come back in here and make changes to things that you've done in the past. And so remember that this tool also comes with uh, some additional things like a grid to allow you to align to a surface. So for example, if we go back into the cut option right here, if you right click on a face, you can add a grid. You can use the grid function in order to um, basically like snap two surfaces. And let's say for example, that you wanted this grid to be closer together. So you can align the grid by clicking on multiple different vertices. You can also adjust things like the resolution of the grid by clicking on the button right here. And so I, if I was to click on this point right here, and then this point, 
Notice how I can use this in order to add an inset. And then I could also do things like adding a taper on the back side of it. So I could just click in here and then adjust this in order to add a taper. But then you can also click and hold and create an array. And so what the array function is gonna do is it's gonna allow you to create an array like this. I'm gonna tap the V key so this isn't a centered array. But notice how I can move my mouse in order to set the spacing and then tap C in order to jump into the mode where I can actually set the number of copies that I create in here. So I could click to set my number of copies and then I could validate this. I could also click and hold again and I could use the mirror tool in order to quickly array this across multiple different axes like this. So we're gonna click and hold, we're gonna validate this, and you can see how you were able to quickly add this arrayed um, series of cuts on your surface. So you could also, if you wanted to add another cut, you could use the shape function right here, and you could actually right click on this surface, and then I'm gonna do a shift left click in order to finalize this, but notice how I can use this in order to quickly add the cut to this surface, and again, this is still editable. So I can come in here and add the taper, the second solidify, the second bevel, all of those different things. So um, again, this just makes that process really easy. And so remember, there's also tools in here for things like pipes and cables if you get the power trip version. So if you wanted to add like a series of cables, for example, you could click in here, click in here, and that's gonna start adding your cables. And again, you can just kind of click and hold and adjust this. So for example, if I wanted multiple different pipes in here, I could just use the array function in order to do that. We can also quickly adjust the radius. So then you could also adjust things like the twist. So if we go back and we set the twist function right here, notice how we can set if these cables are going to twist. So we could set the twist two, we could set the twist one. Um, so you could set both of these so that they twist inside of your scene. So a lot of different options for editing things like cables as well as, and then you could also add things like pipes to your surfaces as well. So I can like adjust the path on this, for example as well as things like radiuses, other things like that. So from an overall tool set standpoint, um, I think a lot of the tools are the same. It's just been rewritten to give you kind of this better interface so it's a little easier to access all of this different stuff. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about Fluent. I will link to this in the notes down below. Um, I'd love to hear what you think about Fluent in general, what kind of tutorials you'd like to see with this add-on. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.